I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back now, years later, that was my embarking point um, for being able to say that what I'm doing isn't working. Um, whether it was, this was the point where the crashing was happening, the embark into the wilderness was happening. And I just had another late-term miscarriage. Uh, we were far from home, and everything in me longed to be home in Canada. I feel like I can breathe here. And um, we had just returned from Germany. We had, my husband was a youth and college and career pastor at the time, and we had led, you know, 25 teenagers through Bonn, you know, doing the typical mission trip stuff. And um, the whole time I was, I was in the process of miscarrying. And we had never told anybody. We just kept it a secret. One of the biggest things that has been dismantled for me is the idea of secrets. <laughs> Um, because at the time I was so self-preservation minded that I thought that I was safe with my secrets and I didn't trust community, I didn't trust people with my grief. And so I never told anybody. And I think that now I look back on it and I think they would have loved to have supported us and been there for that. I didn't give them the chance. And so we came home two days after we arrived home. I didn't even have the strength to unpack our suitcases. And we had our, our miscarriage at home and it was just my husband and I through that process. And that two days later we were in church and we were sitting in the front row and it was very full, very busy. And this woman who had been the pastor there um, years before was back visiting and I didn't know her very well and she didn't know me at all. Um, I knew of her and respected her, but I didn't know, I mean, we didn't have a big personal relationship or anything. Um, and we were in worship and, you know, sermon and all these other things that happened and everybody was kind of standing up and leaving and I was still sitting there and all of a sudden I saw her just kind of catch eyes with me across um, the front of the church and she came walking over and she crouched down beside me and she grabbed my hands and she said, um, I feel like I have heard from God and he wanted me to tell you that you are not forgotten. And the whole two weeks that I had been letting go of this life and fighting with God. The thing that I kept thinking, it didn't matter whether I was walking the streets of Bonn or I was in an airport or I was, you know, telling teenagers to get back to bed. Um, in the back of my head, the lament that was gripping me was, have you forgotten me? Do you see me? And so when she came over and crouched down and took my hands in hers and she said those words, it was like this benediction that I could go and that it was okay and that he had not forgotten me. And she had a few other words that she said to me at that time, but those were the ones that I remembered the most and I carried it home and I went home and I unpacked our suitcases and put everything away and I stood there and I thought, we can go. We can be released. We can leave ministry. We can leave this place. We can leave the plans and expectations and the life, life step seven plans to whatever and we can set out into this unknown thing because I am not forgotten. I may never have children, I may, I don't even know what this is going to look like for me, but I am not forgotten. And so that was what that meant for me. Um, and it is something that I have carried in almost every area as I have moved through my life and the thing that I feel heals more than anything is sometimes all we're longing for is for someone to see us and to say that we're not forgotten. Um, and so as I would work with young women who were in crisis or in the midst of life controlling you know, issues, whether it's drug and alcohol abuse or eating disorders or depression or whatever, physical and sexual abuse, I mean just terrible, terrible things. And they're always asking, have I been, have I been forgotten? And I think that that's something that you see, you wonder if anybody sees you, are you invisible, whether you're in Haiti or you're in, you know, Calgary or wherever you are, does anybody see me? Do I matter? Do I have any worth? And so for me, the starting point for a lot of healing was beginning to see the worth that we have in Jesus and that wholeness and that life and that love and that those things that we are not forgotten. Would you tell the people though that those people, the people watching right now that well, that's a life in the pit of hell. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Everybody I, is not forgotten. I do. I think, I think nobody is forgotten. 
I do. I think that in heaven's economy, nothing is wasted and nothing is forgotten and nothing is lost and nothing is broken that won't be healed and no, no tear will not be wiped away and that even if those things are part of the not yet of the kingdom of God, that that is what we are moving towards and that is what we are called to as the people of God are the people who are wiping tears, the people who are making things right, the people who are setting things right, the people who are planting gardens in exile, the people who are grabbing hands and looking people in the face and saying, you are not forgotten because I see you. What gives you hope that all things will be made new? Is it cocky to say experience? <laughs> I, I think that um, it's too late to tell me that all things will be made, made new because I have seen too much newness and I've seen too much new life and too much birth and too much longings and things restored and wholeness happening for me not to see that this is God's heart and um, when you look at it through scripture or whether you look at it through history or whether you look at it in, in your life or whatever else it is, um, we're moving towards redemption. And sometimes on a quiet day you can feel it coming, right? Like Wendell Berry said, you can feel it coming. Oh, no, Friedrich Buckner, Buechner, that's who it was, right? Somebody get the Bible out. Give me something I can use. No, the, the new life is there. It's so close you can hear it breathing. <laughs>